What's up my loves? My name is Paige, this is Pages with Paige, and today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up. Get yourself a cup of tea, <laughs> or a beverage, and some snacks, because we're here for a ride. I read 20 things in the month of March, and I have no idea how the fuck I managed this. So, one, I read 20 things. Two, I participated in Becca's Bookopolathon. Three, I completed a 2,500 word assignment. Four, I uploaded three times a week, every week of the month. And five, I did this while working full time. What the fuck? Like, what? How? Who? Ha! Love that. So in terms of statistics, as I said, I read 20 things, cor correlating to a page total of 5,747, averaging pages per book being about 287, which is pretty decent. Like, there were some smaller things, but then we had a few chunkers to break up the mix, and that would total reading uh, roughly 180 pages per day. My average rating was a 4 star, with having 5 5 star ratings, 11 4 stars, 1 3.5 star, 2 3 stars and one 1.5 star. I read one classic, five contemporary, seven fantasies, one historical fiction, two non-fictions, two things of poetry, a sci-fi, and a thriller. In terms of age ranges, I read ten adults, one new adult, six YA, and three middle grade. In terms of formats that I read, I read ten via physical audio combination. I read five physical. I read three ebooks, one ebook and audiobook combined, and one straight audiobook. I read 16 standalones and four series, so a little bit skewed on where I'd want to be sitting with those, but understanding uh, when I get to it. My biggest book with the, was Hero of Ages, um, which was 724 pages, and my smallest is This World is Full of Monsters by Jeff Vandermeer, and I'll talk about that more, but that was only 38 pages. My listening time was roughly 37 hours. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? So, into the books. Alrighty, so for the month of March, I was participating in Not Safe for Workathon, which is the rate of thumb that I host with some other beautiful ladies. And yeah, so this month's theme was um, STDs mixed with Pokemon because you've got to catch more. So let's see how I did. The first book that I read was Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris, and this was for the prompt. For Twister, was short chapters. For Not Safe for Workathon, it was a general rewards, a book out of your comfort zone. So I did manage to enjoy this. It just... Ah! Um, so I ended up giving this a four stars. I really enjoyed the narrative, the backstories, the way that Hannibal speaks. I really enjoyed Clarice and getting to know her character as well as all the different sort of aspects that come along when hunting for a serial killer. I found it really interesting. Buffalo Bill was just a really interesting character. Ash and I also live streamed <laughs> watching the movie for me the first time um, and I'm glad that I did that because I could go back and see like where my attention was actually invested and if I was scared or not scared. Overall I didn't feel that uncomfortable like the thing didn't phase me but like seeing the bath up fuck that wow but yeah I think it was very true to the book, um, and I actually want to continue on with the series. I can see how it would be damaging, especially in the time that this came out. So yeah, I'd love to hear more modern own voices trans reviews. So next I read The Ethical Slang by Janet Hardy and Dossie Easton. This is fulfilling the prompt of trichomoniasis, read a book with five or fourteen letters in the title or a word that you can't pronounce. And I ended up giving this a three stars. I was very underwhelmed. So I enjoyed the first two parts out of five, but then it just sort of teetered off. I felt that this was more your hippie grandmother promoting free love, love is for all, in a way that wasn't very productive. It was just like, oh, we did this. They did try and go, oh, if you're ace, like, and don't experience sexual attraction, that's fine. Like, you can, you don't have to have sex to have intimate relationships, which is great and accurate. But then it would be like, sex is great. Have all the sex. Do all the different things. Experience all the things. Otherwise, you're not actually living. Um, and it was, there were just some things in it that I was very uncomfortable with. There was one scene, or one anecdote, where the author had um, talked about, you know, ending up with 
this guy and having sex a few times um, and wrote to each other and they began looking for dorms. The only room that they could find was a double sized room that I could only afford if I shared it with someone. So I called the dude and proposed that we share it, putting a partition across the middle and sleeping on separate mattress mattresses, which he agreed. So she's put forth that they're going to sleep on separate mattresses. First night there, Finn has already gotten himself a mattress and I hadn't yet, so I shared his. Somehow, we never did get around to getting another mattress. We wound up living together for a couple of years, then getting married. That missing mattress led to a 15 year marriage and a couple of kids. But honey, you set those ground rules. Like, you manipulated that situation to be what you wanted it to be. How the fuck had you not got a mattress? Like, it's an essential when you move out. What, did you think you were going to sleep on the floor for the first night? Like, you proposed that and then didn't go through with it. And there were just examples like that where it was like, uh, no, that's not really on. I do understand that these things happen and I'm sure there was a wider context as to what actually was so it wasn't actually manipulating the situation, just the way that it came across. I was like, mm, no. Nah. I don't vibe with this. I don't like this. I do appreciate it being a forefounder for polyamorous relationships and branching out and feeling more confident in having poly relationships or open relationships. And I think the place that Ash and I are in is one where I'm happy with it not being open. If he wants to open it up, fine, but I'm not overly concerned if that doesn't happen, if that makes sense. So it's like, I appreciate some of the things, I liked the skill guides, but aside from that, I just, just didn't do it for me. Next up, I read We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, uh, which was for the UTI prompt, which is to read a book that features water in some way. So our protagonist, Marin, she swims a lot. She also comes from the coast, so water is referenced quite a lot, and I believe this is water on the cover as well. So fulfilling that prompt that way. And I gave this five stars. I really adored it. I think it was beautiful exploration. Dealing with grief, um, with dealing with loss, with dealing with not being able to let go of the past, of being able to support. Like, it was, it was brilliant. And so I really, really enjoyed this and it was so eloquently written and I just, yes. Oh, we're matching, love that. So yeah, uh, five star read, definitely would recommend. But we also know I love my hard hitting way, so. Next, <laughs> I read The Beautiful Poetry of Donald Trump by Rob Sears. This was for a poetry battle that I did, so I pulled out quotes from this and the next book that I'm gonna mention, um, and I had you guess in the comments what ones belong to which. Essentially, this is taking interviews, tweets, and like all different things from Trump's speaking and turning it into poetry. And it was glorious. I gave it a four stars because the satirical nature of it was just perfect. A lot of it went over my head because I didn't understand half the references, but I still enjoyed it. I could see what its goal was, I could see how it was supposed to be funny, and for the ones that I didn't quite understand, I still understood enough to be like, "Here, yeah, that's funny. Fuck. Interesting. Oh my god. And he, so Rob Sears would reference where he's pulled this quote from. So that was just brilliant. And yes, it was very, very enjoyable. And I really appreciate that this exists in the world because I did not think I needed it, but I did. And it's great. <laughs> then the next book that I read was a follow on to this. And that was Dandelion by Gabby Hanna. If anyone's familiar with this channel, we know how much I hate adolescence by her because of its toxic worldviews and her delightful nature of absolutely tearing women to shreds, being an absolute fuckwad, and just using this as a cash grab for her fans. Then she wrote a second one, and I used my eyeballs, and I read it. Because the way that adolescence was critiqued was that it was like someone's just put tweets into a book. Tweets into a book. Donald Trump's tweets turn into poetry in a book. We see. Um, and so I figured that Dandelion would probably be about the same. <sighs> the one positive, I didn't hate it as much as I hate adolescence. It's still not good. It's still really toxic. I don't understand how these things exist and why publishers let this go through. Surprisingly, 
I gave it a 1.5, not a 1. The only reason I'm giving it that 0.5 is because there are essays in the back which she titles under um, stories you need to get drunk to tell and she really goes into her home life, um, abuse from both her mother and like others and they were really, really real, I suppose. <laughs> her talking about her trauma made me feel a connection more so than any of the poems in either book and she was just being honest with her readers. She wasn't trying to make a joke of these experiences. She wasn't trying to make money. She was just telling it how it was and I appreciated that. So that's where the half star comes in. If she had a whole book on those and actually like addressed her trauma rather than just was so toxic about it then I feel like I would actually enjoy it. I could see potential. It wasn't her just doing these things just to fill a book and make money. It was her and I appreciate that. So yeah that's where it wasn't as bad as the adolescence. The poetry itself was still bad. There was blatant blatant plagiarism from a very prolific um, Tumblr post like about um, what was it it's the anthropology teacher being like you can only save one you can try and save the world but at the end of the day it only matters if you save one person and that one person is yourself like that's literally in her book and not credited but it's notoriously known on the internet so like ma'am <laughs> so yeah gave that 1.5 and moving on to the next book <laughs> so the next book that i read is everything is fucked a book about hope by mark manson i really enjoyed the subtle art of not giving a fuck and i really enjoyed this one as well so i'm giving this a four stars this was for the twister prompt of a book with only text on the cover and then I correlated it to the herpes prompt which is read a book that ha you've seen in multiple locations so seeing this um, on my bookshelf in the bookstore um, on recommendation videos and things like that so I've seen it around and I was really happy that I got to it Mark just has a way of writing really relatable fucking I think because he just writes a real experience it's not trying to be like oh you have to be amazing it's like no like this is how we experience the world um my favorite quote doesn't even have to relate to the whole concept of the book but it's a friend of mine once described parenthood as basically just following around a kid for a couple of decades and making sure he doesn't accidentally kill himself and you'd be amazed how many ways a kid can find to accidentally kill themselves <laughs> like accurate but the philosophy behind it was really interesting i really liked that he breaks it down in gives you the science behind it but makes it in a more accessible and consumable way it's not being like here's all these scientific studies and we're going to do a data analysis and then do a conclusion from that no 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 we're going to break down each component of it talk through why is it the case why do we do these things that we do okay here you go and yeah really appreciated it next up i read the hero of ages by brandon sanderson which completed off the first year of miss Bond. this was for the prompt of gonorrhea read a book that will have you clapping by the end and fucking oath was like clapping one because i finished the series two because i managed to finish a 700 page book and three because it was brilliant and i gave it five stars and i fucking love brandon sanderson like holy shit this man is a genius i appreciate everything about this i just the plot twists just kill my soul if anyone predicts these like how how i cannot i like i feel that you're gonna hear me repeat this a little bit um that a lot of these are very predictable and i knew the second one thing happened what was going to happen for the rest of the book not for this there were a few things that like i was like this can go either one of two ways and i hope it goes one way and then it went uh, like half down the way that i wanted it to and then took a massive due to it in the best possible way that I could not have fucking seen coming. And it was just, ah, so glorious. The ending, my soul, and just, ha, holy shit. 
So yeah, definitely would recommend. Fucking love Sanderson, and I feel like this is a very accessible read. Um, the way that he puts the overviews in each of his books I love, so then if you take a break, you can sort of get a recap, and then he has like the metal breakdown and the explanation of all the different magic systems, so then you don't have to feel like you're getting lost. You can stop, you can go look and see, and be like, oh yeah, this is what this is, this makes sense, this is how we use this. Love this. Then we hit Becca's book up, Lathand, and Lord help. I knew the first two drops, everyone did. It was a dark cover and a fantasy, so you could either do one book per prompt or you could double up if you wanted to, or you could just do one and not the other. Pretty chiller. But I combined and went with Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. This was my book club pick for the month of March, and holy shit, I need to arrange uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell because I love Susanna Clarke's writing. It was so interesting. Also, not predictable. Like, there was one section that I was like, wait a second, hold up, this seems like, why would that go from there to there? Hmm, okay, I think I have an idea. And then it kept going, and that was proven correct. But then, it kept going, and it was like, what the fuck? Where? What? How? This book isn't even, is not even describable because it gave me the Star of Sea vibes, but how I wanted the Star of Sea to go. So I feel like because this isn't a book within a book, people aren't as interested, but it has that sort of same whimsical, otherworldly sort of vibes to it. And personally, I think it's done better, but that's just me. Like, I just adored this. I loved the sort of vibes. It did get pushed to me as a dark academia, and I can see how that happened, but I wouldn't say that it is. But I'd be curious to hear your thoughts if you do think that this is a dark academia book as well. Alright, so the second roll drops were Person of Colour Rep and a Contemporary, so I started to read All My Gods by Alexandra Shepard. However, this was over the 11pm to 11am shift and I had work, so, <laughs> and to sleep. Uh, so unfortunately I didn't get to read as much as I would have liked, um, and so by the time I finished work, the third roll drop had been released, and that was a first in the series and a chant. So, chance card ended up being The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. L. and um, yeah, so thank fuck, but I was already like 200 pages into this, so I only had to read 350, I think, 380, an amount. That was a lot. Um, so this sort of threw my reading in the works. This was for the Not Safe Workathon prompt of Chlamydia, Rita Slowburn, and yeah, didn't end up doing the slow burn because I had to fucking power through it to get through it in a 48 hour readathon. But it was a slow burn story. Like, it takes its time setting up the plot and developing it. It's following Ayla, who is a crime magnet, I believe, um, who goes and ends up being adopted into a clan of Nathandrals. Um, and so it's their different dynamic. And I adored this. I did give it four stars, it's closer to a 4.5, but this being a reread, I got to just go along with the story a little bit more. I didn't have to overly think about it. It was a complicated read, it's not like you can just sit and zone out. You do need to be paying attention because it's a chunk. There is a lot of information and a lot of different interesting things, um, but I just love like how beautiful it is. I love the support she gets from her adoptive family and yeah, it's just really, really beautiful. And this was also my big book pick. So I pulled out The Mammoth Hunters, which is the third one. So I ended up reading the first. Um, if this gets pulled out, I'll just read the next one in the series where I'm up to. So yeah, and I definitely do want to continue on. I really enjoy it. So. And then the final royal drop was set in the present day or other. Um, so I backtracked a bit and realised I wasn't going to be able to finish Oh My Gods um, in the time that I wanted to, as well as having a few other things and just needing a quick read that was an audiobook. So I picked up Fowler's Fair by Hannah Kappen and this fulfilled the contemporary prompt from before, just not the POC side of it. I ended up giving this a four stars. I enjoyed it. It was extremely predictable. I just didn't love it. It was girls at an elite school that, one girl at an elite school who wanted to get revenge for these boys that um, day raped her. And it was just, it sort of left a bad taste in my mouth. Not because it was dealing with the topic matter, because 
I am very interested in reading stories about rape and how people deal with it. But it just felt so out there. And uh, like the parents were just like, oh, my girl's gonna fix all the problems. So we don't need to be involved in this. This is fine. She's not like dyed her hair and going to a different school. And it was, it was just so unrealistic that I couldn't suspend my disbelief and enjoy it, I suppose, or enjoy it more. I think it's a really good feminist story, being able to take back your power, reclaim your voice, be able to be the boss ass bitch that you know you are and not let anything get in the way of that. But aside from that, it just, the story itself just didn't hold my love. I'm so sorry, Kara. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I still gave it a four star because it was enjoyable. It was just, there wasn't much more to it. I'll see if I can find Kara's review so then you can actually get more of a positive and vibe from it. So. And then to fill the prompt to other um, for Bacopolathon, I just needed something quick. I literally had like two hours um, to be able to finalize off the Bacopolathon. Ended up reading This World is Full of Monsters by Jeff Vandermeer, which I believe is like a sci-fi sort of. I gave it three stars because I was just rushing through it. I just needed to read something. It was 38 pages. Like considering the amount of world building that went into those 38 pages, I'm impressed. Like it's really interesting and I really really enjoyed what I did listen to and yeah so like it's following an evolutionary tale and it was just weird and enjoyable and very short so I don't have a lot to say. Then all fucking chaos hit as I realized I had to read a lot of LGBT content for my assignment that I had to do. So it was based around LGBT literature for the ages of 8 to 12. So there's like a lot of picture books focusing on LGBT and how to introduce that to families and things like that. There's a lot of YA that is um, LGBT content. That middle range, not a lot. So I ended up reading Lumberjanes Volume 1, which is written by Shannon Waters, Grace Ellis and Noelle Stevenson. Um, and I love seeing Noelle Stevenson's drawings. Um, she did Nimona and I adored that. And I adored Lumberjanes as well. It was just not what I needed. The LGBT wasn't like too prevalent and it was that little bit older than what I needed it to be. So I was like, God damn it, okay. So really enjoyed it. We'll continue on with the series. Really, really loving what I've started with, but it just didn't fit the assignment. So I ended up reading George, which is featuring a trans main character um, as they're discovering how they want to approach the world and sort of come out and be accepted for who they are. Um, and I found it was a really beautiful tale. One main issue <laughs> that I had with it, and that is a definitely me issue, not the book issue, is that George gets punched in the stomach. And so he throws up all over this character. I have a massive phobia of vomit, and the descriptions of it was really unnecessarily detailed because, you know, apparently that that's like what you need in a book. I do understand why it was included, but it just, it carried on throughout for a little bit longer and I was like, oh please, can we, can we stop? So I don't think that hindered my rating. I still gave it a four stars. I still really enjoyed it. I see the value in it and I did end up using it in my assignment to say, the importance of this um, particular text. It was just for me, I don't think it would have been a five star because the writing just wasn't how I would want it to be. And then that scene just, I was like, oh, I'm in pain. This is, this is not a pleasant experience for me to witness. So if anyone else has issues with it, know that it's there. Um, you will know when it's coming up. It was like the second he got punched, I was like, no. Obviously, not many people will have an issue with that, but I just wanted to put it out there. That, that was the thing that did really make me feel uncomfortable. But yeah, that's more a me thing than the book thing. And then we ended up moving on to Seance Tea Party by Romina Yee. This is beautiful. This is a five star read. It is so gorgeous and hilarious. So here's some illustrations. Um, and it's all about growing up. It's about figuring out who you are and who you want to be and just 
embracing what life has to offer. So I just really enjoyed seeing our protagonist Laura grow up and sort of discover who she is along the way and it was really wholesome and again, five star read. I also did end up using this for my assignment. I think it is teetering just on the edge but it, she sort of starts off at what I would consider year five or six, so you know, nine, ten, eleven, so it fits in just. <laughs> But I still used it because I think it's a really good LGBT uh, literature. Even though the LGBT elements aren't, it isn't a main relationship. There is one openly LGBT char side character who it's just accepted. That was one of my main arguments. Um, you could also question whether the girls, but because she's a ghost, there's sort of like, it's a different kind of love. Then I ended up reading Drama by Raina Hilgemeyer. And I gave this a four stars. Again, too old for what I needed it. The LGBT rep in it wasn't really what I wanted either. One of the brothers is openly gay, uh, and then another discovers himself along the way. This girl's falling in love with both of them. It's just, I did like the ending where she stands up for herself and figures out that falling in love with everyone who is attractive is not ideal. Um, but yeah. And then I needed a break from reading. We still kept it in the teenage range because I read Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepard. So I literally only got 40 pages into this during book couple of time. So I read the rest of it. I give this a four stars because holy shit, I love Greek myth. This was so funny and dealing with family, with feeling like you're an outsider and just wanting to be able to be accepted. Loved it. Predictable so hardcore that it's not funny but I still enjoyed where it went I wasn't mad that's how the story progressed I think when you read as much sort of YA literature that this is you sort of just know um and I, I'm not mad about it I still it was a great palate cleanser it was a great quick read I read this so quickly um when I did manage to sit down and just read it so it wasn't like there were any issues with it, um, it was just, yeah. This was also one of my rainbow books, so happy to have ticked that one off my rainbow shelf. We're almost there, I promise. Then I had a mini heart attack and realised that the Buzzwordathon hosted by Books and Lala was not the time related words, it was the actual word time. So originally I was going to do Hero of Ages because that's a time related word, ages. But no, it had to be the word time. I was like, shit. Okay, panic. We're getting the time machine by H.G. Wells. I gave this a 3.5 stars, mostly because of the racism that exists in this. We're not on board with that, we don't like that. But the science itself, the exploration of the other world, fantastic. Loved that concept. It was just those in your face blatantly racist <laughs> fucking bullshit that I was like hell no. Nah. I think that the exploration of human existence fascinating. The ongoing effect of having a capitalist society with the workers and those that live in luxury very interestingly explored. So yeah 3.5 a very quick and easy read and filling the prompt of time so Love that. So I started reading the next two books for my assignment. So I started them back with George Seance Tea Party and all of that. Just didn't get around to finishing them. I just, one I was like, no, it's too old. And that one was Pet by Akweki Amezi. Um, so this again is teetering right on the edge. For my demographic, I don't feel that it works. I feel that if you know your kid um, and they're eight to 12 and you feel like this would be good for them. Sure, go for it, no problems. As a generic overall recommend to all eight to 12 year olds, not so much. So I adore this. I gave this five stars. I fucking love it. And I think any, if you know your kids and like you think they'll be able to handle the content matter, fucking go for it. It is brilliantly written. I just don't feel like in a school environment that would be the smartest choice. So this is following Jam and her best friend Redemption and this monster comes out of a painting even though there's supposed to be no monsters left and he's like I'm on the hunt for a monster. It's in the house of Redemption and it's like damn! The monster that turns out not to be a monster is 
pet and it fucking glorious. The character is trans, totally accepted. They also are selectively mute. Uh, so there was like one tantrum that they had when they were younger and they were like, go, go, go. And they're like, oh, okay, jams go. Got it, moving on. Um, there is a poly family and so not her parents, but her best friend's parents are in a poly triad um, and one of them goes by they, them pronouns and the protagonist is black. There's a lot of descriptions um, of the culture of the family and it's just so beautiful. It is so eloquently written and I just fucking loved it. The story itself, fuck, amazing. Holy shit. Like, the, oh, content warning for child abuse for a person under the age of 15. Um, and yes, whew, that was tough to read. Did that got the heart going and just there's, there's many feelings, many feelings. And then the second last book, fuck, we're almost there, was Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean. And again, I gave this a four stars. I had a lot of trouble getting into it. And yeah, I found that it was a really important story on pride in being proud of your family on learning how to navigate um, LGBT families and rainbow families. So I feel there is a lot of important and valuable information. I think just speed reading through it to for the assignment was not the way that I should have ingested it. Obviously, never recommend it. So it did hinder my enjoyment of it because I found that I kept stopping. I was not invested. The characters, just the way that they talked, I wasn't overly in love with and then because I was trying to get through it faster I was like nah I think it was a me case but I feel like there must have been some element that I just didn't drive with um so yeah but I can understand that it's a really real really well written book and it has a lot of valuable content that I definitely would recommend for that 8 to 12 like it is perfect for that age group so like yeah, there was a really big disconnect between the language used and the actual age of the characters. And then the final book, the final book I read was House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland and I gave this a four stars. It was fucking weird. It was creepy. There was one element of it that I saw happening and then another element that I ended up correlating the two. This cover, stunning. This is the ARC edition um, that Ash picked up from his work. It will go back to work once I have given him a review. I think this was fascinating. Like looking at the different kinds of personalities, the way that these things keep happening, the descriptions of this were more intense in terms of I'm uncomfortable than Wilder Girls by Rory Power. So these had like, there's a lot of death and almost dead. So rotting and just that sort of thing. Again, a lot of vomiting as well. Love that for me. This was really brilliantly done. I love the way that the whole story progressed and I was just captivated from the beginning. And yeah, so highly recommend. Uh, this came out on the 30th of March, I believe. So it is out now if you would like to go pick it up and have this beautiful cover on your bookshelves because yes. So these plus Six other fucking things are what I read in the month of March. What the fuck? Admittedly, having that assignment thrown at me, I had to just binge read a lot. And whether I've retained any information, we shall find out. Let me know in the comments how your March reading went. Are you happy? Do you want to do some buddy reads or reading sprints to get your April up? How's your good reads goal going? Because yes. That's the thing. <laughs> if you like this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this mess, feel free to subscribe. And if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. I'll hopefully see you in my next video.